Good evening, board members. Dr. Moderato, Ms. Carolee Tur Turner Little. My name is Renee Kamen, and I'm the school planning uh, planning manager. With me this evening is Ms. Nessa Dennis, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Scott Washington, Capital Planning and Construction Director. Tonight, our office is here to present the 2019 school capacity charts and supplemental data, which is part of the entire Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance. The APFO charts are utilized as part of the growth management process of Howard County for new residential developments. The board and HCPSS are required to update the school capacity charts annually. In 2019, the new capacity utilization tests are in effect. These changes occurred as part of the 2018 APFO uh, process with the County Council. The annual report identifies the capacity utilization for each school, that is every elementary, middle, and high school, as well as elementary school regions that are constrained to new future de residential development if capacity utilization developed for the FY 2020 capital budget and capital improvement program and redistricting processes exceeds 105% uh, capacity utilization for the elementary schools, 105% capacity utilization for the elementary school regions, 110% for the middle schools, and 115% for the high schools. These calculations are based on capacities listed in the most recent board's requested capital improvement program. Individual schools or elementary school regions that show a capacity utilization less than the percentages above on the screen um, are noted um, as opened for new residential development. Additionally, the APFO requires submission of several supplemental items, which I'll discuss in a, a few short moments. Um, before I really begin, this is an example before you of how to read the uh, open and the school capacity charts. It's attachment two, I apologize, these are charts and they don't show well, but this is an example from attachment two, the elementary school chart. Um, individual schools or elementary uh, regions that show a capacity utilization less than 105 percent are um, considered open and they will be left blank on your chart um, and if there's a c next to the school i believe the example is um, jeffers hill um, it is considered constrained and therefore no new development can proceed um, also if a region has a c next to it the region is considered constrained, and even if there's an open school in the region, it still means the development can't move forward in the process. So in attachment to, uh, this is the elementary school capacity chart. It's the first page of the attachment. This test year is school year 2022-2023. Again, reflects the capacity utilization rate, rates with the Board of Education's requested FY 2020 capital budget projects, the spring 2018 projections, and the Board of Education requested FY 2020 capacities. For 2019 school capacity chart, 18 elementary schools are considered constrained, and there's only one elementary school region that is constrained. Those elementary schools include Cradle Rock, Bryant Woods, Clemens Crossing, Running Brook, Bellow Springs, Elk Ridge, Hanover Hills, Veterans, Centennial Lane, Hollifield Station, Northfield, St. John's Lane, Waverly, Affleton, Gorman Crossing, Fulton, Pointers Run, and West Friendship. The northern region is, cons is considered constrained for new construction in school year 2022-2023. Um, Page two of attachment two is the middle school capacity chart. There's an the it's up on the screen ahead. Um, for 2019, there are six middle schools that are considered constrained. Uh, the region test again does not apply at the middle school, and the middle schools identified as constrained include Bonnie Branch, Ellicott Mills, Thomas Viaduct, Dun Dunlogan, Patapsco, and Murray Hill. Lastly is the high school capacity chart. Um, this is the newly required chart based on the 2018 changes to APFO. Um, and for school year 2022, uh, six high schools are considered constrained and they are Howard, Long Reach, Centennial, Mount Hebron, Hammond, and Reservoir. Um, additional documentation is, can, is in attachment three of your report. Um, it includes state and local capacities. Um, on the facility, the date of last redistricting for each school boundary, um, and also a chart that shows what portion of a projected enrollment increase is due to the housing factors. 
And lastly, the capital budget pages showing current and future funding assumptions if a school is open in the test year. And the example is Talbot Springs for this year. Since Talbot Springs is anticipated in school year 2022, then it shows as open on the chart based on the capital improvement program. Um, and again, each of these are in your is in attachment three. The last page in attachment three is intended to be the notice to the county council of schools that have reached 95% capacity utilization and is projected to exceed 110% capacity utilization within the next five years. The attachment also includes potential solutions as required by the ordinance. Should you approve the motion um, to send forward the APFO, the council should then be prompted to hold a joint special meeting as indicated in the ordinance. Above you is the schedule um, for this legislation by the county. Um, tonight is the action requested from the Board of Education. Um, May 23rd is the pre-filed legislation on both the housing uh, allocations chart and the school capacity chart. On June 3rd, there'll be the introduction of the legislation to county council. Uh, June 17th, there'll be a, pub a public hearing at county council. To the 21st, if deemed necessary, there will be a work session for county council. And then July 1, um, they will have action on both the housing unit allocation and school capacity chart. Um, and with that, I can take any questions that you may have. Ms. Coombs. <clears throat> Thank you um, for preparing this. I have a, a one, one quick question that sure. I had not had before tonight. Um, what is the difference between the report that we originally received and the one that's on that was at the dais tonight? Oh, that's just the color version of okay. the school Okay, I was trying to look through the differences yeah. but couldn't yeah. find differences. We identify okay. the um, red for closed for very easy. Yeah, it's a, easier yeah. To, to look at it rather mm -hmm. than um, in black and white. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple concerns. I ran the American Community Survey data um, a few days ago. Um, I don't have it on me right now, but um, the 2017 five-year data shows around 1,000 public high school students in the northeast area of Elkridge. Mm -hmm. which for this purpose I'll define as east of north 95 and north of 175. About 800 of those students live north of 100. Mm -hmm. There are also 740 new residential units in various stages of planning and development in the area above Brute 100 and 1,130 units in the area between 175 and 100. So mm -hmm. that's very concerning looking at some of these, some of these numbers. Um, and I'm concerned that the, the illustrative plan um, that you had provided for us last year for High School 13, um, it's planning on moving those communities to a community that does not have any shared sense of community. Um, so, you know, like Elk Ridge Youth, um, you know, leagues and that, because there's such a large area of industrial properties that separate. Um, and so those students don't have any bonds that naturally exist. Um, and then, in regard to safety, that's a huge concern if, as we're looking at um, High School 13 and where it's going to, its catchment area. Um, you know, 175, Route 1, um, and I-95 Locust experiences regular disruption, such as the recent airlift of a tractor trailer. Um, uh, four or five years ago, I went to Alan Kittleman's first um, town hall or whatever, and it was at Duckett's Lane. And I remember um, not knowing that much about the issues at Blue Stream. Um, and those have not been addressed. And I, I hear there are going to be 13 more uh, lights, proposed signals, along the Route 1 corridor and 1,800 plus additional residential units. So I want to make sure that we're thinking about that, especially in terms of the feasibility study that's coming up, um, that we need to be honest about the safety concerns and thinking about what the plan is for High School 13. So I'd I ask my colleagues as well to have those concerns um, because if th there are children in the in the Northeast, um, I want to make sure that th we're considering their safety, um, their safety first. So, thank you, Ms. Coturnio. Um, for Burley Manor Middle School, the projection is um, 770 students, but they currently have. 816 students, so I'm wondering, um, and this is true for a couple of the schools, that it just, it's not really meshing with the pattern of development and um, the current enrollment and the trends. So I'm just wondering how, how 
I guess the data that you put in to run the run the numbers. How does that? Can you just you know um, speak to that a little bit? How how so you would get to this? The the um, my office's responsibility is to project for September 30th um, of every year. Um, our projections include multiple factors of housing and um, births and uh, cohort survival. All of those factors are um, compounded on top of each other in order to get to a projection. Every year following that projection, when September 30th hits, we adjust for any of the unforeseen circumstances, things we can't predict, like, I don't know, a recession or maybe there's um, higher turnover because there's higher resales in it. So every September 30th, we go back to the projections that were developed that year um, and adjust for the following, for the following year. Um, these projections um, that are used for these charts have to do with the same decisions in the time frame of, um, of board decisions, whether for in, the, in this instance, it's really only the capacities of the FY 2020. In, years, in other years, it could be redistricting that can have a differing, differencing of effect in terms of what numbers we are reporting. Um, so all of the factors that are going into um, this are all of what has been collected for 2018 and the enrollment and taking it forward um, through until 2022 and beyond, because we report a 10-year period. Well, so what would take what would it take for a middle school region to be constrained? So there are no middle school regions to be constrained. Okay. So Bonnie Branch, if you want to use that, it's 110 percent capacity utilization. So um, based on the law, 110 percent, it would be close. So if it's 110.1, 110, it would be considered constrained. Um, for new development. That does not stop someone from moving into a resale and the school right. can continue to grow that way as well. Well, I'm just concerned because Burley Manor is not going to not have, it's not going to have 770 students in 2022. I mean, looking at the, and it's true for some, many of the other schools that the rejection is less than the current enrollment and they're in high growth areas. So I'm just, I guess I'm just wondering where, how does that happen? I get you, you tried to explain it, but I still don't understand how we can be so far off. And in, those schools, Burley Manor, Dunlog, and Patasco are extremely overcrowded in that area. And um, Burley Manor is not constrained on this chart, so it would still be open to development. Yeah, we um, actually started last year looking at our accuracy rate for three years out and we are still coming within the 95 percentile for many of our schools and many of our projections so every year we continue to look at um, um, process improvements how we can get better data we go directly to sources for a lot of data um, so it's a continual process improvement for us it's a projection it's kind of like the weather sometimes even what they're predicting for the weather tomorrow is not exactly what happens exactly at 5 30 on a on a friday so we we make adjustments as the um as the september 30th enrollment comes in we make adjustments based on all of the factors that we compile um and so we take what we know and we apply it to the to the future in order to um, create these charts and it's the same methodology that we use throughout the entire process well it's just concerning because it's so many it's mm -hmm. such a difference and I mean even like the, the elementary schools in the north I mean I know they're almost all constrained now except for Manor Woods which is yeah. it's you know in Turf Valley is is delivering to Manor Woods still and um, I'm just I, I'm just concerned with the with the difference in what we're projecting and I know I could just go on all day about this, but for and, and looking at the trends, like Hollyfield Station, 70 new students from the year before to this year, but we're saying that they're going to have less students. There are 881 students, and we're predicting that they're going to have 839 in 2022, and I don't see how that is even possible, given they have, and they, I think they've had, you know, 10 students in the last month. So. That's my concern, is that we're really off on some of our schools. Yes, across the county, averaging, we're, we're hitting our targets and maybe by regions, but looking at individual schools, um, there's some big differences that I'm, I'm concerned about. And I know some of my board, fellow board, and I'll, let, I'll turn the mic over to some of my colleagues because I could talk all day. Dr. Wu. So the first question, the student number, Projected on September 30th, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Is that a number defined by law? That's the number we should report, or other numbers we should report during the school year? Um, I believe it's September 30th, and it aligns with other reporting factors that the school system so is So it's a projected do. number, right? Yes, okay. it's a projected number. So when we project the number, I would say from last year we know, for example, we know the number is much larger than what we projected. For example, just took uh, Bernie Manor as an example, right? And we know the project is 770, right? And then we actually enrolled 807. And then we project in 2018, 804. So that means our model is not very accurate. There is some discrepancy, I would say, right? So why we continue with the same model? We didn't change that. For example, we may need to include a, mo a factor in the model. The factor may be middle year like enrollment. So we know the enrollment from the September 30th is different from the enroll number, enrollment number on May 1st. Right, we know the number changes, and especially during the school year, early, maybe in September, October, we still got a new enrollment. The number will keep increasing. That's I've been here hearing about that. So why not we include a factor which try to say, okay, what's the maximum number during that school year for the projection? And then the next year, that number, that model should reflect there's a possibility we'll get a maximum number in the next project next September 30th? Um, so our projection methodology mm -hmm. is standard throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. um, many schools, and we've had this validated, and we're going through the process right now to validate our projection methodologies and comparing it um, nationwide. Um, so that's, that's the first step. The second step is some school districts actually do a mid-year adjustment um, mm -hmm. for purposes of operating budget. Um, it is something the board can absolutely consider. I don't know, um, having our office doesn't really do a robust procedure for in the middle of the year. It, it requires a lot of data searching um, and a lot of data collection. So it, it would be then all of mm -hmm. the operation that we would do. Um, so so, so it could be something that mm -hmm. the board could consider um, doing mid-year adjustments based on September 30th enrollment. We would have to figure out a procedure and a process to do something like that. So another question, when we project on September 30th, we, are, we can project a range of that number. It's not just not, for example, 1,000 exactly. That maybe you have a range of confidence, right? It's maybe if you got a 3% error, you can report 1,030 or 970. So what's the reason we just report that number, because that really affects the number eventually. We see a lot of schools overcrowded and keep overcrowded because most didn't come in. But we're not reporting the max numbers. We just reported the number, which is maybe the minimal number. So we have choices in how we mm -hmm. do our projection. So mm -hmm. we use historical um, five-year, the most recent five-year data. We have this um, part of our projection that does a best fit analysis that says, for this type, uh, for this factor, which of the last five years um, performs the best? So we we can we have that ability. So mm -hmm. projections are both a science and an art. Mm -hmm. If we know a certain thing is happening in a school and we're out and talking to principals, we have the ability to adjust the factor um, based on um, the data that we receive because we look we look um, at each. At each, thing, at each item that we look mm -hmm. at. So we do a best fit analysis. Sometimes it really is on fi only five years. And we can see the historical trends in certain areas. So we might, in five years, see a, a really high increase of, I don't know, resales, for mm -hmm. example. But that could just be a blip in the radar. So we wouldn't necessarily want to jump to that higher percentage because it might not actually be showing the whole picture in, in that one um, data point. So take Burley Manor as one example, right? It's, the number keeps increasing, and we are projected lower. And then what's the disadvantage if we project in the higher range? Or we just need, because of the projection, right? You can project a lower range, you can project a higher range. What's the rationale we project in lower range? Um, so it's not that we're choosing the lower range. Mm -hmm. It's we're looking at the individual data set, and it's saying in the last five years, 
um, this has been the trend. This is where we've received new students to that attendance area. So we can uh, look at the five-year average. We can look at the three-year average. We can look at the one-year average. Not only that, if, um, for example, an area has a type of housing unit that's not new to online, we can look to the county in order to apply that rate as well. So there are four different choices. It's not that we're intentionally choosing low. We're actually using empirical data, students that come in and out of our system, the movement of our, the migration patterns of our students, in order to pr try and predict the future um, and make those decisions based on the data that we have in the past. And, and we continually update that every year. That's why we come every year with a feasibility study, every year with um, the, the charts, because inputs change. And they can change quickly based on certain circumstances beyond our control. So then can you explain the Bernie Manor situation? I would have to go look into the projection to see which part of, of the individual pieces are making up the projection. OK. And get back with you. So another question about the, the regions. We have an elementary school region, right? So if you look at the, and uh, I try to understand why we don't have a region for middle school. I think high school probably covered big enough. But for middle school, why we don't have that? Um, I really don't know the answer mm -hmm. to that question. Um, I believe if my, if my recollection is it was brought up as a point during the last revisions, but it didn't go very far. Um, and the elementary, um, and so it never it bubbled to the top. I, I really don't know the history as to why there's not a region, but it will be covered now by the high schools. Okay, that's for for the moment. Thank you, Miss Mallow. So my first question is kind of a generic, overarching question: What do we, as the board, have the capacity to do with this chart? Pun intended. Mm -hmm. So what what can we do? Do we? Is it an up down vote? Is it a this? C is a correct C, and this is a wrong C. We, you know, your responsibility is to submit the chart um, to the county council. It's not an up down on each individual closed or a constraint. It's a reporting of the information that we have. Is my understanding of the adequate public facilities ordinance. So, for our purposes tonight, it is truly just an up down vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two is um, assuming this gets approved as it is, you indicated that there would need to be a joint meeting between the County Council and the Board of Education. Is that that June 21st work session or is that in addition to that so work session? My understanding of the law is written, it would be in addition to. Okay. Um, my recollection um, between the, the Board and the County Council when APFO was debated and discussed in 2018, it would be a joint meeting to get everybody to the table and have a discussion as to what next in terms of um, the board's solutions and having a public forum um, and collaboration together. Okay. Um, then my next question is, I want to reiterate Dr. Wu's question. What law or regulation are we um, holding to that requires us to use September 30th data? Um, it's my understanding that it goes back to MSDE standards and requirements um, in order to submit all of our data, testing data, everything. Um, every single LEA across the state does September 30th enrollment. Every LEA across the state submits their data and their information based on September 30th. Um, I think the only exception is the free and reduced me priced meals, which is October 31st or 30th of the year. Okay. So you're talking kind of an, in general about enrollment projection or only with regards to adequate public facilities ordinance charts like we are passing or not passing tonight? In terms of the projection or I'm, I'm, can you so, repeat your question? So when you're talking about all LEAs submitting data based or 
generating these enrollment projections based on the September 30th. Is that specific to APFO, or are you saying that we use that date as a general um, operations, standards okay, of operation? I got it. Okay, so um, not every LEA has same ad adequate public facilities laws. Every LEA um, is uh, develops their September 30th projections. That is to the side. Um, Howard County's law, APFO ordinance, requires that um, we report out um, for that specific purpose. We generate and use our September 30th in order to make a lot of board decisions, including the capital budget um, and uh, the, the feasibility and discussions around the feasibility study and boundary. So we are using that same September 30th projection um, within the 10-year capital plan in order to report out for purposes of adequate public facilities um, ordinance for, um, for the county ordinance. Okay. So if when working with our county executive and county council with regards to APFO, if they wanted more current numbers to better reflect the situation today, is that something we can do, or are we bound by these numbers? And because basically we're looking at numbers in arrears. So it's a choice of the Board of Education. Um, essentially, the numbers that you're seeing today are the numbers used to make your previous decisions and your current decisions that are underway right now in terms of your capital budget. Um, so it's, it's a decision of the board. Do you want to use a standard data set that has gotten us through the last year to 18 months? This closes that cycle. Or do you want to um, use APFO as your starting point for your entire process and the projections used for um, as the starting point? And then so you're, you'll have new projections with um, previous decisions in terms of your capital budget. So it, it, it's, it's the choice of the board on which direction they would like to proceed. Okay. Um, and I would like to suggest that we as a board consider moving this conversation next year, earlier in the year. And the reason I'm suggesting it is that as we're looking at an up-down vote, we have no ability to affect whether or not we think these numbers are accurate. We have no ability to um, suggest a different methodology. Um, and we're under a really, I mean, if it has to be pre-filed in two days, then, you know, that's a, it's a two-day turnaround. We don't have a lot of options. So I would like to suggest that looking forward, we maybe change our timeline so that we can actually have um, an impact on what comes out of our body much more deliberatively. Ms. Delmont Small. I'm going to start by reiterating my colleagues plea, common sense, that this unfortunately is not the only process that this board has looked at and said it does not make sense and it is not getting us where we want to go. Um, you are in a, in, a, in a very unenviable position, which is basically you are picking lottery numbers in some ways. Um, but the challenge that I as a board member continue to have is that this inability of we don't have the ability to impact development. We don't have the, that ability at all. We can't tell people where they can live. They come to the county. We have great schools. Everyone wants to come here. But the problem that we're having is that we continue to constrain ourselves by our own policies. And actually, I would like to double check if it pleases the superintendent with general counsel as far as whether or not this board can go beyond an up-down vote on this particular item. Hello, Mark Blum, uh, General Counsel. Uh, that is something that I would be glad to look at. I'm not in a position to give you a definitive answer on that tonight, but I'll be glad to look at that as well as the issues raised by Ms. Mallow about 
um, different data to sets. So if this, so this needs to be pre-filed in two days. So, but once it is pre once we provide this to them, we can up, I guess that's my question, is so we have this pre-filing deadline, correct? Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity for us, if we would like, to provide an amended chart? Um, yeah, the board actually did that last year when we had the discussions through Tablet Springs um, in terms of the replacement school. Uh, so the only example I have to go off of is that where the, the capital, uh, capital budget and the capacities changed for that particular school, which impacted the um, open and closed chart uh, of last year. So when I came and presented about this time last year, the school would have been open due to the board's requested capacities. Um, but there was also a, a side, you know, we were also talking about the replacement school of Talbot. And then that decision happened, I believe, two weeks later. So then I came back to the board with an amended chart. That's the only example that I have in front of the board, but an amendment should be um, an, a, a route to go if decided. Okay, I guess then my question is, if that would be something that this board, I'm not saying we would or wouldn't, but if this is something that the board would entertain, what would be the timing for us on that? I'm sorry, can I have that question I'm again? I'm so sorry. It's, no, it's no problem. <laughs> if the board, not saying that we are, were to entertain providing an updated, amended, whatever we want to call the little darling, what is the timing for us on that? What would the time uh, be? You would have to submit to, it's not up here, um, June 27th, I believe. Okay, so we would have until June 27th, so there would be time between now and then to to try work, and do chat yeah. with you, work and, some Yeah, out and, and I can I can double check, double check with the um, council's office. I work with um, council staff on this. Um, I believe the date is June 27th, and I can come back to you and let you know exactly the process for that. Okay, because again, you know, another thing that I always like to try to figure that I think it's important for the board to do is to speak with staff to figure out as to what cons what are you finding constraining you to be able to get us numbers and to be able to Again, we're throwing spaghetti against the wall in some cases, but I mean, is there anything that we so can change can to help us continue to improve the process um from staff's results. perspective i think the biggest challenge is the board's requested budget versus the board's final budget um, because that directly impacts the apfo in terms of capacities so if for example um, a project that has been in the capital budget for school year 2022 gets moved to 2023 that impacts if even though that even though 2022 is the test year but something in three or four moves that also impacts the um, our ability to present the chart so that's one of the challenges we have in terms of timing so I don't know how to ask is there could you just run me through like when they when the county gets the chart when they get our chart mm -hmm. and then it goes into the whole mix of deciding mm -hmm. what's open you know who can build and who not can build to, who can't build because that's basically really what impacts the students mm -hmm. so when they look at this when they're deciding whether or not someone can build, it's in the immediate future. They're not, are they looking at someone who's coming and saying, I'm thinking about building there, you know, in 10 years from now. That's not impacting it because we go pretty far out in what we are saying. So I'm wondering, so is um, it? Hurting us to do so? In, in terms of county council, I can't really say yay or nay, but in terms of the staffing perspective, once the new charts are um, adopted on July 1st, they go in immediate effect. Um, Mr. Jeff Brownell, who is my counterpart in the um, DPZ, he is 
one of the, he is the one that administers the test for housing unit allocation and for the school capacity chart. He has bins, so if, if last year um, there was a development that was um, put in the bin and can't move forward, in other words, they don't receive their um, housing unit allocations because they failed the school's test, they get retested after July, um, after July 1. So he administers that part of the test. So he, like, uh, he is waiting um, for the county council in order to pass the, pass the uh, new charts. If the new charts don't get passed, then that means they still continue to use last year's charts. Okay, that was going to be my yeah. other question. What yeah. hap What's the default, so to yeah. speak? So they would continue to use the last year's charts. Okay, and um, I'll stop. One more question, then I'll let sure. others go. So when, we're when you have the capacity listed on here, Mm-hmm. That is the hour rated capacity, correct? Correct. The county capacity. And does or does not include pre K? Does not include pre K, does not include relocatable classroom spaces. Right. And when, so then when we're doing the, just tracking mm -hmm. that, so, and so when you're making our, when we're making the projections, we're doing it just within the brick and mortar building. No pre-K, no nothing. Yeah, K through five, K through five at the elementary school level, um, and no pre-K um, programs or pre-K students are used in our projections. And do we do when we have specialized programs throughout? Do we include those numbers or not include them? Um, it depends because I know that those move yeah, sometimes, it, so I don't. It know It depends how you on the program, but in general, um, any regional program for special education or say JROTC that's used inside the building um, is not counted towards capacity. Okay, thank you. Miss mm -hmm. Taj. So I just want to go, the Burley Manor question, and sure. just having two different data numbers. Um, and this will come up again and has come up before, which is just having the discrepancy in the numbers, and it becomes this sort of tension between the community and what are we reporting. Is it, what would you say, like what is the solution to that? Is there, a, can there be a dynamic process to let you know why how, how should that work, So I guess? we won't be able to verify our um, projection until September 30th of that year. So um, a lot of things can happen in three years, and a lot of factors could be up or down. It could be the birth rate was low for that year, and that school is, that birth cohort is hitting at that year. Um, so we wouldn't be able to say for sure how accurate our data was from 2018 until school year 2020 to 2023. Um, we've been asked to do that, and like I said, our office has done that, but we wouldn't be able to do 2022, 2023 until it hits. Um, so there could be many um, factors inside the data that is making it actually lower, perhaps, than what it is existing now. And as we all know, enrollment can fluctuate from day to day, um, month to month. Um, and we are trying, and you can have numbers all over the place. And so to, to focus down in, we, we use September 30th again because that aligns with a lot of the other um, tasks that the school system as a whole uses in order to make other decisions. I guess, and I totally, I, this is hard to do. So it's, mm -hmm. I don't know if there is a solution or not, but it just seems like when one person saying, this is the number, and another person saying this is the number based on this, and they probably are basing it on different numbers and different things. Can there be a conversation? Is there room for a conversation? Um, yeah, there's always room for a conversation. Like I said, we're um, going to be coming to the board with a validation of our methodologies, um, and that should be happening in June um, 13th, I believe. Um, and they are coming and they're looking at our data, looking at our methodologies, looking at um, everything from which way to Sunday to see if. A, our methodologies are still on track. B, is the methodology still the way, you know, the majority of school systems do it? And C, how is our projection, our projection methodology comparing to um, similar school districts of size and, and the like? Yeah, that makes sense. Just to yeah. have sort of a conversation rather than I'm getting this and you're getting this, who's lying to I'm getting this because of this and I'm getting this because of this. So that's why our numbers aren't 
agreeing, but let's figure out a way to find the most accurate number yeah, and we to move be, forward with right. what we want to do. And we want to be careful that we're looking at the, the right criteria for the right number, set of numbers. And so sometimes we get them mixed up. I know that when we brought a report, I think in January, it was a report that was usually information, an information report. Yeah. Um, it identified each it, school. Yeah. It, um, and it was, we had the same conversation about it, but it was more recent yeah, projections. Yeah, we, we do, we like I said, we do accuracy every year on our data. And we right. show even down to the school level um, how accurate. As we move farther down in the school, we can have our biggest um, errors um, and our confidence level goes down at the elementary school level because that's where we find the most movement and the most migration patterns occurring. Um, so we can have schools that are... 12% um, error rate, we can have schools that we miss by one student because they're more stable because right. the um, housing might be more stable and people come in, come out very stabilized. So that used to be what um, Nessa was saying, that used to be um, just an information report to the board, but we've rose it to the level um, to report. Sh report out to the board to show that our methodologies have are producing these things, these projections, and these projections are accurate based on the en actual enrollment for the, the time period in which we're projecting. I mean, and we know anytime we're looking at this data, and we understand what you're saying, that we want to be clear, and we want to be, we want to make sure that all of the methodology is transparent, and we're sharing all the criteria that goes into that. So that is definitely a conversation um, to be had um, in a work session or what have you. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Ms. Kamen, I would just like to thank you and your staff for all of the hard work that you put into getting these projections. We know they are not going to be 100% mm -hmm. accurate. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, appreciate knowing that there, there are some schools where you might have a 10% off, whereas in another school you have less than a 1% off. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know for the community, if it's their school that's the 10% off, that creates a lot mm -hmm. of sensitivity right okay so we're now at a point where everyone has really had an opportunity to speak so I'm going to ask people who have signed up if you can be succinct in your questions and we'll go to Ms. Caternio um, how many more units are projected for Trafali since they're not under APFO and there's no there's nothing I can um, ask my I, I mean, I've done some edited from the development the monitoring I, I'd have report. To, I, I can it's ask like a the thousand county units. And count, you know, I'll, 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 I'll get back with you on that answer. Okay. I'd have to ask um, the county. Ask, yeah, ask the county to see where they are and what's in the phases what's going because on there's, just, the phasing, there's yeah. no nothing holding that back, and it's just flooding the schools in that area. And there's really nowhere it's turning nowhere to go. Um, my other question: um, the the regions, like in elementary school, I know we've had this discussion about changing how we do what's. Con we have pointers run in Fulton in the west region, and Fulton is no. It's the southeast, really. I mean, it, and I think that can impact what's. Con does that impact if a region's constrained or not? Whether how many of the schools are in that region are. Yes. So, I think that's a discussion we need to have with the how the regions are are divvied up because no one would say that Fulton Elementary is close to Bushy Park or close to. Um, Lisbon Elementary, um, and it seems like it's going down this way on the county, and maybe we need to think a little more where they're close to each other. Sure. Yeah, a little history mm -hmm. about the regions. I'm sure there's a lot of history <laughs> <There's> about the <laughs> regions. And this is lore. Um, mm -hmm. I spoke to the, my predecessor. Um, it goes about three uh, comprehensive plans ago um, when they were discussing growth growth in the region in, I believe, the late 90s, early 2000s. And there was a departure. Um, they, the county used to rely on us for regions, um, but they decided that they didn't want to do that that way, and they set off on their way for regions. Um, and we just stuck with, with ours. Um, and it could absolutely be a discussion that I think the board has. I think yeah, it needs absolutely. to be updated because mm -hmm. the growth patterns in the county, I think we need to update the regions mm -hmm. um, because it, it's overloading. And it's not telling the, the real story, I think, when you when you put Fulton with Bushy Park. Um, to speak to what Christina Stelman Small was bringing up earlier, is there op there is opportunity to have more? Because I have a lot of questions. There is. We could certainly have a, se a session offline, too. I just feel like we, we could be here. I could be here for two hours asking questions, and I'm sure no one wants that. 
and Ms. Ellis wouldn't let it happen <laughs> anyway. But is there opportunity to, to have dialogue, certainly, yeah, before we have to make a decision? Is there an no? I think what they've said is that we could make a vote on this and then we can amend or do an, a revision. Is that what I heard earlier? I, I, will, I will have to check with my counterparts. The only amendment that I've ever processed with the Board of Education was in terms of the capacities changing due to the change of program delivery um, in the budget cycle. Well, I guess what I'm asking is there, if we can do that, is there opportunity to have a work session that would be dedicated to you get answering questions so that we can have we can file an amendment that's the only question about a work I just, session I just <laughs> no there, there are time. there are no more days left okay. for work sessions I'm very sorry <laughs> I just would like to have these conversations between open. graduations going I know this I know we can just like okay just one more question can I can okay. I make a suggestion yeah please what Ms. Mallow was saying is, you know, just having, there's no reason we cannot continue the conversation for the future mm -hmm. and to have some dialogue for the future. What we have to do right now, we have to do because we're two days and there's no more room for work sessions, but there's no reason not to have that conversation continue, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Correct. Okay. Okay. And this is for 22. Are you okay, yeah. Ms. Caterno? Yes, 22. Yeah. I just want to remind you, this is for 20. 22 right and then next year we'll be presenting 2023 so you'll have you'll see numbers again next year and okay. we'll be able to compare them if you're concerned about those projections okay. this year it's there's still going to be time for conversation okay um, is there any quality analysis of the data that's input it into yes there is yes and so what so we're, we're doing that right now, um, and the findings will be presented. We did it in 2015, verification. verification. Mm -hmm. We did it in 2015. It was presented like January 2016. Um, we're having the consultant do the, the same, uh, thing. same thing, similar study, um, making sure that we're still on the right track. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we vote for this tonight, we, there is time for amendments and change. It's not... Ms. Hanks. Yes. There's time for, we're, I think Ms. Kamen said she has to contact the, co the county mm -hmm. to confirm we could do that tomorrow. about the amendments. Uh, our next board meeting, well, we have no more meetings. They have two, we ha it has to be filed in two days, so, right? Yes. Um, like I said, bef in, um, I, I understand like the capital budget is coming up. I think it's changed to June 6th. Mm -hmm. So if something happens or changes in the capital budget that directly affects capacities, if there's a delay in a project or a change in a project based on all of our conversations, I will have to come back and um, likely mm -hmm. request an amendment um, in order to reflect the board's now decision. Um, in terms of the FY 2020 budget and capacities that go along with it. And so I would have to, I would have to come back very quickly for that. So based on experience, this was done in the past. It and was this done was fine year. to do because it, the capital impacted it. But you're making a change because you're changing a capacity. It'll change a capacity utilization based on the budget decision for FY 2020. Okay. Okay, that's, I have m many more questions, but I'm, I'm going sure. to hand the mic over. <laughs> Sorry. Thank Absolutely. you. Boo. Mm -hmm. So I would rather we send the right number to the county council instead of we rush it to the, get a number. So because Ms. Diamond Small mentioned the pre-K is not included. The reason I, I talk about that is because if I look at the Dayton Oaks, right, the project number in 2018 is 604. And then on the school profile, three, 735, so that's 130, 131 students, 131 the, students. The, the prof profile includes mm -hmm. pre-K students. Yes. 
So you would have right. to subtract the pre-K students to get to the projection, the so K through five. Do you think we have one thirty project pre-K students there? Yes, that would not surprise me, considering mm -hmm. the programs that are offered at Dayton Oaks in terms of pre-K yeah. and special education mm -hmm. programs. So. They occupy the space. I mean, right? I'll double check the numbers sure, for you, but sure. it would not surprise me that there would be mm -hmm. um, a number of pre-K students based on the programming out there. Okay. So I think my concern is really, we are still growing county, and our student number is keep growing. And then we have so many overcrowded schools, and the APFO is one tool we can use to really lower the development speed. And we need to do it right. So I would like to say, if you want to make an amendment, we send the number, what's our maximum projection for that year? And send that number to the county council for the moment. If that number is right, OK, let's get that. And they can see that. If they don't agree, we show the numbers. If they don't agree, they don't agree. But the number should be there. They should have an Understanding we are growing and we still get overcrowded schools, and that problem will not be solved if we don't get the projection aggressively right. Okay, Ms. Mallow. This is another forward looking question. Can we uncouple the capital and the operating budget in future years and pass capital at an earlier point than operating for? Ms. Kamen's purposes, because she had indicated that it would be helpful to have that information earlier. So is that something that we can look to do? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the answer is no? County. OK. That, that, that would be it. I mean, I don't think it is, but I mean, it, 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 it impacts was, the county as well. So right. we're not doing it in isolation of the county and all of that. It's all connected, right. OK, so I was trying to make it easier in future years, but yeah. apparently we can't. OK, thanks. OK, Ms. I, get, I guess the, the thing that I would say for future would maybe be that APFO could potentially be presented sooner to have more discussion and more time to have questions. That's what I would think for, right. for next year. Okay, Ms. Delmont Small. Is there anybody thinking about a motion? We're getting In a some kind of a motion. <laughs> so back to from what I'm hearing is that we could have, it seems, until June 21st to provide an amendment to the chart. Correct. Correct. Based. Maybe. Yeah. So maybe. because when we were talking maybe. about maybe. Maybe. maybe that's a maybe, maybe based well, on if we have changes that that are impacted by the capital budget, then we know from past experience that well we, we know could that that would be amendment. the one in road right. so to speak to be able to get us to be able to do that right. whether or not there's another one we could have Mr. Blum check to see right. if that's possible because I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think the county council would prefer that we do to the best of our ability to provide them with a chart that accurately and, you know, that we think through and make sure that it gets them closer to what we think is really going to happen. Because, like, we have, what is it, Westmont, Westmount, they now want to do a change with their zoning. So, I mean, things continue to change and change and change as far as new houses popping up where, or with capacity um, density increasing, where everybody was told, well, no, def density was going to be X, and then density is X plus whatever. So this continues to be problematic. I, and to my colleague's point regarding our projections and where we are now, I pulled the data for April 30th, 2019. And I went back to the feasibility study of 2017 in order to look and see what were our projections then and what did we think. And I'll look, like just for Dayton Oaks, for example, we projected 591. As of April 30th, we had 734 students. And the school capacity is 675. We also have 
Waverly, where we predicted 686, and we have 933. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Like pointers run 705, and now it's at 941. And that we redistricted, and we still ended up. And I know that all of this stuff factors in, and this isn't a perfect science. But again, how can we get Okay, again, Pointers Run also has pre-K and special education in that 903 um, number that you're seeing. So you would have to subtract out anything that is kindergarten, less than kindergarten, in order to have apples to apples comparison, relatively speaking, um, to to the projection. Um, Pointers Run did have a redistricting in it. We re-aggregated all of the information, all of the... um, criteria in order to do another projection. But one of those things we do not do is the pre-K and any special, um, the preschool services that we offer at Pointers Run. That's another one of those schools that you have to be very careful when you're looking at an enrollment number. That enrollment number includes a a certain portion of the population that is not in our projection. Well, then may I make a suggestion Mm -hmm. that when we put these charts on and they're on the website which is fabulous Mm -hmm. if we can create a column of total without pre-k and total you know obviously for elementary are you talking about the profile nope i'm talking about the howard county public school student membership summary and we monthly it it's on our website and it gives the number of students are you talking about the monthly enrollment reports Mm -hmm. because i do believe it's reported out by grade level Right, it is. We have, so to, it gives we have to, yeah, we have to do some math in our office um, to subtract out those columns from the total as well. We can't just put it into a Excel spreadsheet and have it do the magic. My for my us. office is not responsible for the uh, monthly enrollment reports. I can look at the office that does it in order to make that suggestion. Okay. Because, I mean, I I want to make sure, I mean, I would love apples to apples, but if it makes it difficult to get apples to apples, we're not doing ourselves nor the community a service on this. So thank you. Is there a motion on this? I I want to make a motion to amend this. Cindy, we we said we can do amendment, right? We can't. We have to send. What I'm hearing, Mm -hmm. or what I think, Ms. Kamen, I'm going to ask you. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Dr. Wu is asking about making an amendment to this. I think we, I think what I've heard from you is that we need to first send the chart and then consider what the amendment would be. Is that correct? Or? Yes. So, so then you would be replacing the chart. Yes. Yeah, so Your amendment would be limited to replacing the chart or any of the supplemental data that you're sending off. That so would be should your we, amendment. So should we? Have amendment voted to have amendment today, or because we are we not have, have to, no, we have to vote on the chart we first. Don't have an amendment. Today. Okay, so what would the amendment be? My amendment will be first the number should be uh, reflect include maybe the I would say the projection should be the maximum projection for the year, and then the number should. Be, I'm not sure why pre-K was not included. How, how, can anybody explain that to me? Why pre-K is not included? Because there are students, they occupy space. Why is it not included? So if I include pre-K, mm-hmm. I will also have to go back through all of the schools mm-hmm. and recalculate the sure. capacities for every single elementary mm-hmm. school to mm-hmm. include pre-K through mm-hmm. five, mm-hmm. as well as pre-K through five. Um, it would be a, a change in the board's direction from when we did all of our capacity studies in 2000 and I think it was eight, 12, and 14. So that is um, a hu- a bigger discussion um, mm-hmm. in terms of board direction, in terms of what they actually want to consider in capacity. And in order to have apples to apples, then what they would like um, in order to be considered in um, a pre-K uh, enrollment. We've attempted, um, well, not me, but our office in the past have tried to um, attempt to predict pre-K enrollment. Mm-hmm. And we have found that our um, our counterparts in the pre-K programs do a better job. They know exactly what's going on. So it would be a collaboration between both departments in order to do it. 
Um, and so, but again, if we're going to include pre-K, we're going to have to go through and do an entire capacity analysis at the elementary school um, level in order to make sure that we're doing apples to apples for capacity utilization mm -hmm. um, as well. So I'm so, putting, yeah. yeah so so my question is, and so you said the previous board like 10 years ago, 2008, is that right? You said 2008? Um, as recent as 2014 as well. 2014. So what's the reason not including pre-K? Because pre-K, their students, they include, they occupy the space. They have teachers. Why we're not considered in the capacity? Can I? Yeah. Can I? Yes. May I? I think the past board discussions, we don't have pre-K is not mandatory. We don't have it in every school. Mm -hmm. And we don't get funding for pre-K. So I think that's where the board was coming from, is that we would focus on the students that are in this school at every level. So and so, remember, they're excluded from capa from capacity, so they're not they're not included in, in terms of numbers of students or in building capacity. Correct. They're excluded for both, so it's yes. apples to apples. Yes, right. that is correct. Right. So that's why it, you either include them and then you recalculate the space, yes. so, or you exclude them and you exclude the space. Correct. Which is what we do now. Correct. So. I have a question on that, right? We so have Dr. A Wu, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wu, we need to come to some kind of consensus on voting on this. I'm not sure if there is a motion that needs to be put on, on the floor, but we need to decide whether or not, either up or down, if we will be sending this chart to the county council in two days. I move that we send the APFO chart to the county council so that we are not reliant on last year's chart. These are at least updated numbers. I second that. I want to add an amendment to that motion. Do you accept it? I don't know what the amendment <laughs> suggestion would you be. Want a so, okay. The amendment will update the number projection to be the max projection, maximum projection. So, I don't, I, when, I don't know. so when you project, do some projections, you have numbers, you have a range, right? You have a confidence level. Is that how you project that? No, we you just, use, just one we, number. No, we use five years um, empirical data. Mm -hmm. um, so the most recent five years, for whatever factor we're doing, has a rate of students that um, appear for that. Um, then we compare that to the projection used, and we mm -hmm. can have a choice between first, third, or fifth in terms of the way the projection will um, is best has best performed. So in some schools, the five-year average, because it's most likely a more stable school, um, in terms of its growth factors, that would be a, that could be a choice. It could be a three-year or a one-year average, depending on um, depending on the factors that we see on the. So I, I wouldn't know what maximum would be in terms of how you're trying to define maximum. So. Okay, so. Uh, can I finish one? No, I think that we really need mm -hmm. to take a vote. If the vote fails, then you can have more discussion. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion by Ms. Mallow and a second by Ms. Taj to approve the APFO chart as it is. Ms. Catronio. Yes. Ms. Mallow. Yes. Ms. Coombs. Yes. Ms. Ellis. Yes. Dr. Wu. No. Ms. Delmont Small. No. Ms. No. Tosh. Yes. Motion passes 5 2. Okay, we have one more item on the administration. Ma'am, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. I have a motion. Okay, go ahead. I move that the board have an additional meeting prior to the June 21st deadline by which we can submit an amendment to the chart to discuss a possible amendment. I second. So what I'm trying to ineloquently say is that if we find that we can amend without having a change to the capital budget, that we have an opportunity to meet again and to do so. 
Ms. Ma Hanks. <laughs> We have a board meeting before June 21st. Do we need to have an additional meeting? It can just be if add, we could, if we could added do it, to the June 13th agenda. If we could do that, it, we could do that if no one, if that makes everybody happy, I would love that. Okay. So then I withdraw my motion. <coughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, we will now move on. Uh, I, I want to make a motion too. Well, please these. punch in so I know that you want to do that because sure. I can't tell. Sure. And I'm not sure what the motion exactly looks like, but I want to say we wanted the, the planning office and think about how to update the model or or what because the pre-K is not included. I, I have really have a concern on that because- I, I think that you should have a deep discussion yeah. with them so, about that because they can explain it better than- that, that, That's a board decision. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so that's a philosophical thing that the board needs to decide yeah. what capacity is. Yeah, so if I want to make, like, make a motion based on that, which kind of motion yes. do you think, Casey? What's I, the best one, Ms. Hanks? I don't know that we have enough information. We could, it's something that we could discuss, but you, I don't think that we're ready think, to make a decision. I think Dr. Moderano could probably send the board a, a memo okay. to explain what that would entail so that you have the information you need to make it a decision. Okay. 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 That would be great. Thanks. Anybody else want to make a motion? <laughs> <laughs> okay. To move on. Okay. Uh, Ms. Coturnio. Just quickly, I'm sorry, Ms. Kamen. Or, yeah, she can. Do, I, do we need to do any, I would really like to advance a discussion on regions. Do we need to make that a more formal request or is that something that can just be part of the discussion? Because I think it's going to be really impactful, um, um, especially as our schools become more and more overcrowded. I would believe we could do um, a direction to the superintendent. We can explore different um, ways of doing doing okay. regions, we could explore. Okay. Like, well, then I would like to make a motion to, to direct that. the superintendent. Or no. How long Can I? Um, how do long I need to make a motion? How long would something that would take? Um, we we've already had just started having discussions in our office about what that would look like in order to align at least to the comprehensive plan regions. Yeah, we can. We yeah, we can. Yeah. And one more thing: this how we um, calculate student yields. Mm -hmm. I would also like to advance that conversation because I think we've been using the same formulas for a long time. And and who move, how many people move into apartments? Who moves into apartments and, and townhouses is, is changing. So I can we add we that can, or do I need? Yeah, we can we can talk internally. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And somebody else has punched in. Ms. Coombs. <laughs> oh dear. Um, isn't that going to be part of the discussion with the consultant? Is it? Yes, on As June well. 13th, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's okay. what I thought. I thought there was going to be okay, more. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now, again, would anyone else like to no. make another amendment? No. Okay. 